Hello world. This is the photo op podcast. I am your host 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 ho 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 ho. Welcome. This is the photo op podcast. The podcast where we talk about all things photo and video. And I'm Stuart Melendez. And this is Photo Up. And today we have a very special one time event. I don't know, it might happen again in the future, but we have a in studio guest. Yeah, this so, is wild. We've done a hundred something episodes yeah, and no guests so I far. Know. So you are the, so, you're the first. Our, our, our guest today, a college graduate from the University of Washington, double major in anthropology and international studies. He is an absolutely incredible man of culture, currently working at a prestigious banking institution as a software developer and getting his master's degree uh, in something computer and techie at uh, Seattle <laughs> University. <laughs> to all of you listeners, I present my friend, the best man at my wedding, Ulysses Lynn. <sighs> Hey guys, glad to be a guest of the show. Clap, 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 clap. clap. (laughs) Okay, so uh, for anyone wondering, why do we have a guest today? Today's topic, we are going to be talking about AI art. So I uh, recently went out to lunch with Ulysses, and we were talking about AI art. It kind of came up, and we started having a really interesting debate slash discussion on the topic. I said, hold up, hold up, one second. Let's record this. (laughs) So um, today uh, we are going to be talking about AI art and we're just going to we're just going to roll and see where this goes with us. We're going to talk about kind of what it is doing to the industry as a whole. Um, Yeah. So so, AI art actually eating the world like people say. And and uh, one thing that I do uh, want to bring up as well, you said uh, for your master's degree, one of the classes that you're taking um, you've been talking about this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so right now I'm taking a class in machine learning, and uh, it's not completely uh, you know, related to the topic we're going to talk about today, but there is some overlap, and we'll, we'll see some of that later on. Um, uh, just as a disclaimer, I'm just starting the class. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's some interesting ideas already presented. Um, I think a lot of what I might talk about relates to kind of the things that I've seen and talked about with other people um, also like in my class or, um, you know, just people that have experienced uh, using these tools that we'll talk about today. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, Stuart, um, Mm -hmm. I I know that when we started preparing this episode, we kind of had a back and forth, but we agree on a lot of stuff. We do. So (laughs) so, uh, why don't you go ahead and start us off with um, why why is the art community having a problem with AI? And we'll just kind of... (laughs) <laughs> I'll, I'll just kind of kick that off, sure. and then from here on out, not so much moderation. We'll just see where the wind takes us, or rather, where the uh, AI machine learning takes us. Cool. <laughs> um, well, uh, there are several reasons why the AI, why the art community is is upset about AI. Um, one is uh, they feel that AI art is plagiarism. Um, it's the data sets that uh, Dolly um, and Midjourney and, and similar uh, programs were. Uh, developed on uh, included a ton of art from artists that didn't necessarily opt into that or agree to be part of the data set and if you put in um, parameters that point to that particular style of art you'll get something that looks like that artist um, may have made it Um, and so people say that that's plagiarism even if the works aren't necessarily exactly the same um, kind of copying the style is uh, is a significant thorn in people's sides I think that's a big one but also it's cheap. It's way cheaper than paying an artist to do the work. So a lot of artists are like, yo, it's hard enough to be an artist. No, you're going to replace <laughs> this with a computer. It's and it's and the other probably third biggest thing is um, a lot of artists are like, but it's not actually that good. Um, and I feel like that's the like, we feel you, bro. Like, that's what we've been saying about cell phone photos um, and videos for the entire time. Uh, people don't care. Like, yes. Um, you know, straight up DSLRs are will shoot the pants off of any phone, even the newest, best phones any day. The average person doesn't care, and I think that the artist community is seeing that with um, with uh, with these programs. Is uh, yeah, people don't care that it's not as technically competent as an actual artist would make because they can do it now and for uh, little to no cost. 
Yeah. Um, one thing that I want to make sure that we get into the background when you talked about um, how it's stealing IP and stealing art from artists who aren't opting in mm-hmm. um, is someone might be listening to this and going like, what do you mean it steals? So I want to dive into that mm-hmm. a little bit sure. because at least to me, that is the biggest issue with it. Um, when we talk about the discussion of like it replacing artists, I'm like, yeah, I have thoughts and opinions, but like every every new technology replaces an old technology, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But I think really the biggest problem is the stealing and of copyright and IP. So for the machine learning process, um, one one perfect example is please draw me R two D two in the style of Studio Ghibli, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so this machine had to steal a bunch of references of what R two D two looks like, which is owned by Lucasfilm slash Disney, mm-hmm. and so they stole di- stuff from Disney to put it into the machine. But then they also stole a bunch of stuff from Studio Ghibli to be able to create this amalgamation of what does the style of Studio Ghibli look like. Mm-hmm. And so things get stolen from part A and things get stolen from part B and you shove them into a sh- machine that spits something out that um, all, all the parts that it was built on are stolen. Um, and the perfect example of this is whenever you see a uh, Getty photo or iStock photo watermark in an AI thing because it literally just <laughs> scanned Getty for all of these images and is stealing the watermark. My other favorite one is um, a lot of people in the role-playing tabletop community have been creating D&D maps. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they create a D&D map, one, AI does not quite yet understand why grids are necessary. So the grids are kind of a hot mess. But the other funny thing is there's this weird garbled Patreon logo in the bottom corner. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because every single D&D map has a Patreon creator and they're trying to promote themselves. So they put it in the bottom corner and AI understands that this is a thing on every D&D map, mm-hmm. but doesn't understand why <laughs> so it just puts this weird garbled like text that mm-hmm. sometimes is not even real letters um it both frustrates and amuses me whenever i see that <laughs> yeah the ai doesn't know it's just like i i associate this thing with maps so it must be the right thing to put there that's how right. maps work right <laughs> all right so yuli definitely for the rest of this conversation feel free to just jump in whenever but uh i do want to throw it over to you um what like we're, we, so far, all I've talked about is what's bad about AI. Of just like from a consumer perspective, AI is also pretty awesome, right? Like I know, yeah. I know we were having this discussion earlier too. Yeah, I want to kind of go back a little bit and talk a bit the 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 machine learning process a bit more. Not that I am an expert on it by any stretch of the imagination. You're the but, expert at this table. <laughs> <laughs> the, the local you expert. Are I know the expert. slightly more than that. In this person. room, you are the expert <laughs> so i mean the whole idea with machine learning is you 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 provide some sort of input or a lot of data right in this mm-hmm. case a lot of uh art that other people have made people you know human beings um and then you do uh you you have like a training and a test s- subset if you will of the data that you're provided right and then and then it runs its machine learning stuff which is uh, i think maybe beyond the scope of what we're talking about here in terms of details and then you have some sort of output Right. So um, one thing to think about is, uh, and this is just one like tiny detail going back to what Ben was saying. Um, if you have the little like a logo or like a watermark or something in the bottom corner, um, part of machine learning is just going through like this, this data like pre processing. So like cleaning up the data. So mm-hmm. we might, uh, not we, uh, the machines, <laughs> may, uh, <laughs> advance to a point where they can understand, oh, this is a logo. This is mm-hmm. not what people want to see and then just take that out and you won't even see that. So that that yeah. to me is like even scarier right there. That, and I'm sure they will. We're in the yeah. messy early days of this, to be fair. This is uh, like the bleeding edge. Right, yeah, yeah. right now, um, there's, there's a funny joke I keep seeing. Trying to recognize AI is the same way that you recognize a creature from the Feywild. Count the number of fingers and toes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, um, it's, it's interesting because we're talking about the bleeding edge, but I, I remember just even like a small handful of years ago, I don't know, three to five years ago, like with a, when AI art was coming out like on Facebook and people mm-hmm. posting about it, you couldn't tell what anything actually was. You, you take like a small little square from like an AI art generated image and you zoom in on that, you wouldn't really be able to distinguish any sort of object. Like from a distance, you might be like, that sort of looks like a 
camera or mm-hmm. like a jacket mm-hmm. or something like that, but you couldn't really tell. Yeah. Now you can definitely tell, and yeah, I should that's, say that's frightening. We're on the me, bleeding you know? edge of it being semi competent. <laughs> like it's been around for a little while. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I think I, I think it's the the topic of of stealing is difficult. Like I I think stealing is a good way of phrasing how people think about it like intuitively but it's very difficult to really like point a finger at like you know point a finger at open ai and say you stole all of your input data like uh there are these huge image data sets um and often uh they're licensed or they're open sourced and can you reasonably expect somebody to go through these you know literally in the the billions or like trillions of data points and make sure that every single one was licensed correctly when um you know you're kind of just assuming wherever you're getting this from it's it's in good faith like hopefully the people that put this data set together are doing it the right way when you're adding licensed imagery you're you know paying for that um so it's very i feel a little for the developers of these programs in that you know, you're doing the best that you can potentially, and that's still not good enough because there are, when you're working with a data set that size, there are so many edge cases. Um, and so it's not, it's not as black and white as like they're, you know, they rub their hands together and they're evil layer and they're like, we're going to steal all these images. Um, a significant portion of them, I would assume, if not all of them, they felt that they, that they got those legally. Um, However, not everybody sees it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting about that is um, when we were talking about R2-D2 before, right? Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of the, the data size, um, you you know for a fact that, okay, if you're looking up R2-D2 and the AI is reporting back some sort of weird conglomeration of different um, R2-D2 images, you know just by fact that... that you know, Disney, right? right Lucasfilm yeah, yeah. owns that, that. That's definitely... Oh, yeah. <laughs> infringement of some sort of copyright um right um but let's say you were just looking up ai generated images of cherry trees or something like that it would be very difficult to say okay well you definitely copied that one artist like it would just mm-hmm, be mm-hmm. too difficult to do that it's um, just this is what a cherry tree looks like yeah right yeah so you could really be stolen from as an artist uh by the ai and you there, how would you prove that yeah it's kind yeah. of like a black box algorithm well and what's stealing what's stealing right like lucas right. famously stole like entire scenes and shot composition from like kurosawa films mm. and and if you look at the side by sides like yeah this is straight up stealing like they're composed exactly the same yes this is like a different setting but you know lay, the layout of where the characters are standing what they're doing how they're looking at each other even some of the lighting like is just straight up lifted is but people don't see star wars necessarily is that theft. Bad, bad artist copy yeah. great artist steal yeah right so <laughs> so if you look at that like is that inspiration or is that stealing so is ai inspired by artists or is it stealing from artists well, like where do you draw the line like when you get into like legalese of it there's also um when you take or use something did you change it enough yeah, that you're bringing change. like material change to mm-hmm. bring actual like measurable value to the new thing which in yes, the fair use the thing that everybody loves to quote and yeah. doesn't actually know anything about <laughs> <laughs> no one knows anything about fair use. Uh, I defy you to prove me wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, so so there is that. But I think it's definitely a combination of you have these images that are um, that are that when someone says, hey, like uh, draw me like some painter. Mm-hmm. If that painter was dead 500 years ago, it might be more like, you know, this an innocent mistake of just like I really love Syrah or pointillism or whatever the thing is but um, if it is hey make me a style of painting like this living artist Mm -hmm. that is Mm -hmm. alive right now and making money off their art and that artist is like hey how come the machine knows what my art looks like how did it get fed now people are just doing that and I'm losing commissions anything you post online will be used for an AI data set (laughs) I mean, there's that, but like, but nobody knew that until recently. But, yeah, but also, like, how you can't market yourself if you're not online. That's yeah. not possible no, anymore. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it's so, uh, yeah. You're kind of you're kind of stuck. I mean, what do you <laughs> what do you do? Um, you there is no like. I, I feel like that's something that would solve a lot of people's concerns. Not every concern, but a lot of them is, is there an opt out kind of process? Like, can you, 
you know, in the data set, can you say, I don't want to be part of this data set, don't train the AI on the data set. Is that reasonable to expect that to be provided? I don't know. I think it would solve a lot of people's concerns if it was implemented, but is it even reasonable to implement? I don't know. Um, but not not only that of like to, to depending on where it comes from, mm -hmm. but um, there's also there's also the fact that a lot of people are like, oh, it's replacing artists, which mm -hmm. I can say I have already lost one job to AI art because there's a client mm -hmm. who usually hires me every Christmas for Christmas cards, but this year he's like, I'm gonna do AI because it's the flavor of the month type thing. And I'm like, yeah, no, makes sense. Fair. I'm busy enough. Go for it. But like, I can point to one job that I lost because of AI. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. kind of, okay, maybe this is veering off from what we're talking about a bit, but you're talking about the flavor of the month sort of thing. And I was thinking the other day, is AI art going to be a fad? You know, because it's a, it's a very, I mean, right, Bleeding Edge, we're still kind of developing it. Um, I say no. And, you know, I, so I don't know if you guys have seen these YouTube, like short videos of like, uh, with, um, what's, what's the tool, uh, mid journey, um, yeah. doing like, uh, for example, there was like South park characters, um, done by mid journey to look like as if they're live action eighties, mm -hmm. you know, sitcom like people like, so, and, but it, I started to watch a bunch of these videos. There's one of Star Wars as like an 80s like Yakuza movie. And so they kind of twist, if you haven't seen these, they, they twist the existing images of from these shows or movies and then um, make it look like some sort of 80s style um, media. Um, but anyhow, after looking at these for a while, uh, you start to notice that everyone's nose look kind of looks the same. And you can definitely, <laughs> at first, when I first looked at it, I was like, not sure if this was AI art or not, because it, it just showed up at, on YouTube like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Um, and then I, I started to see the pattern like, okay, the AI doesn't know how to portray um, like a lot of people of color <laughs> a lot of the times. Um, noses are really weird. Um, sometimes, um, Everyone kind of looks the same, and so so after a while, I got kind of tired of these these things, even though they're kind of funny because everyone's just started to look the same. So I'm wondering if this is kind of like a style, like an artistic style that will go out of flavor. I did I did see there was one redditor who got banned from a subreddit for posting AI art, and they said AI art's not allowed on this subreddit. And he's mm. like, I I drew that. That's not, <laughs> that's not AI art. And the mod upheld the ban because they're like, well, it looks enough like AI art. You need to like get a better style or something. Wow. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? Right, right. Some quality gatekeeping. <laughs> right, right. Sorry, your style is too artificial. Get out of here. You gotta be I, a real artist. Well, the other thing too is um, I very quickly, um, uh, I have actually not personally used any AI because I'm a dinosaur. But um, uh, I was sitting down uh, with my friend Dino and uh, he put in of like Sigma art lens, 85 millimeter, um, purple backlit, um, hazy um, mm -hmm. in studio, Bernie's mountain dog. And then I just added the word hipster photographer. <laughs> to it and saw what popped out and besides one of his whiskers being weird and slashing right across his face of like it was bloody brilliant and i'm like mm -hmm. that co cost him nothing and it took like 30 seconds and that is better than any well, my dog would not put up with me letting him wear like a beret like no that's not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean there's stuff that's generatable with with ai art that you either would be exorbitantly difficult or expensive or just straight up impossible to do and you can do it in 30 seconds it's 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 wild in that way um it's certainly a big upside i feel like <laughs> to have that capability i mean yeah uh i know when we were talking earlier uh ulysses you were talking about um the, basically from the consumer of just like it makes art accessible in a way that's yeah uh, so i mean so our conversation for the most part until now has been the creator side of it, you know, as artists, how do we feel about this? Um, but from the consumer side, I mean, I've met people who are super excited about AI art. I've even, I even know someone who really thinks that he's an artist because he puts things into, you know, mid journey. Or he's a prompt sort of generator. He's a prompt <laughs> generator. But from his perspective, he's actually creating this art. That's his yeah. art because I, 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 I don't want to, you know, presume, the way he thinks but if i if i wanted to theorize about why he might think that way i think it's 
you know, a lot of the times art is centered upon a certain idea, right? And if you're the one generating that, that, that idea, that's, that's a major component. I wouldn't necessarily say the majority of what goes into creating an artwork, but it is a pretty big one just coming up with the idea. So maybe from his perspective, he's like, yeah, I, I came up with that and I just fed it into a tool that refined my ideas and then, you know, put it out onto digital paper, if you will. Um, right. Um, but going back to the consumer thing, one thing that I think that is potentially positive about AI art is it does uh, make the consumption of it a lot more egalitarian. I mean, if we go back 100, 200, 300, whatever years, you know, it, you you want an art, you have to be like a wealthy patron um, of the arts, right, to get the art that you want to see. Mm -hmm. like, like, I want a, you to paint like my wife or something like that. Okay, you have to shell out a lot of As money Lady to the artist. Godiva on a horse <laughs> exactly. type thing. Right, and now you can do that in a couple seconds at most, right? Um, so, and and I, I knew a person who um, was like very into AI art and you just pay, I think a subscription fee or something every month and you can basically have as many artworks, you know, mm -hmm. customized to your tastes coming at you. And in that sense, from a consumer point of view, it's it's beautiful because if you want to see things, the things that, you know, you, you would have to like, before AI art, you would have to search it and maybe you don't get it. Now you can just make it on your own. And so that's incredibly cool in a certain way. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of ways that it's not. But <laughs> <laughs> well, That's what we're here to talk I mean, about. I mean, one thing that I will say is when it came to a uh, hipster photographer, Bernie's wearing a beret with, you know, a, with this Sigma art lens in the studio thing of just like... I know I'm never getting that image because my dog will not put up with it and that'd be super difficult and could I shoot it theoretically but I'm like I'm very happy to get a photo of my dog <laughs> looking looking as cool and hip as he can possibly be and no 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 it, it was super cool I was so excited about it and then after that a bunch of people were like boo AI art sucks right. boo but, <laughs> but let's, let's go back in time a bit let's say it's 2005 and I'm just a huge fan of your dog, Ben, and I i don't think you had Bjorn back then, but um, I wanted to see your dog with a beret and sunglasses looking like a hipster or something like that. I'd have to go on to, you know, those different art sites, right? Like DeviantArt. <laughs> and DeviantArt, man. <laughs> make a massive search and come up with probably nothing, right? So from that, like a con art consumerist pr perspective, like this is pretty great. Or you commission just, somebody you know, or right. you try to put a brand on Bjorn and he's not into it. <laughs> so, so, Those are your choices. So, right. But yeah, so so creating it yourself or commissioning someone is kind of what it comes down mm -hmm. to. Um, but I'm actually going to take a quick uh, commercial break, if you will. Not actually. We're going to wrap up this episode and continue in part two. So if you liked this, stay tuned and we will see you in the next one. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or download it. Because it's free. <laughs>